Hello and welcome back to Interpac Academy. I'm Dave Praber, Director of the Interpac Design and Innovation Group. Today, in our latest video series, we will discuss selecting an industrial valve. Interpac offers a complete line of industrial hydraulic valves. These valves provide control to many industrial hydraulic systems. Determining the best valve or valves for your application can be a daunting task if you do not understand a few key terms and valve functions. In this video series, we will provide some basic principles to aid in your valve selection process. To gain a better understanding of industrial hydraulic valves, we should learn a few terms used when discussing them. In this episode, we will provide basic descriptions of terms like ways, positions, center configurations, and how they pertain to valve operation and selection. When discussing industrial valves, there are two different valve portfolios. First, directional control valves, which control the operation or motion of a cylinder or tool. Secondly, there are flow and pressure control valves, which control the specific fluid characteristics in a hydraulic system. In the third and final video in this series, we will cover the application of flow and pressure control valves. When discussing directional control valves, you will hear terms, ways, and the number of positions. The number of ways on a valve refers to the number of unique flow paths into or out of the valve. A simple understanding of this is to think of ways as ports. If the valve is a three-way valve, it will have three major ports. These are usually the P or pressure port, the T or tank port, and the A port. The P port is where flow from the pump enters the valve. The T port goes from the valve back to the pump reservoir, allowing oil to easily return to the reservoir. The A port, sometimes referred to as the advance port, goes from the valve to the cylinder or tool. When the cylinder or tool is activated, the oil goes from the port to the tool. Three-way valves are usually used to operate single acting cylinders and tools. If the valve is a four-way valve, it will have all of these ports plus the B port, sometimes referred to as the retract port. A four-way valve is required to operate a double acting cylinder and can be used in other creative hydraulic circuits. Directional valves may also have a few smaller ports, usually gauge mounting ports, and these are not referred to as ways. In a few specialized cases, custom valves may have more than four ways, such as five or six. These are unique valve applications and will not be covered in this series. Another term commonly used in valve discussion is the number of positions. The number of positions refers to how many control options a valve offers. The most common directional control valve types are the two position, and the three position models. The two position valve typically provides advance and retract functions. A three position valve also provides a center position, usually allowing a hold function. As with the number of ways, sometimes a custom valve will have more than two or three positions, and these also will not be covered in this video series. The last term we will discuss relates to the center configurations. Three position valves have different configurations for the center position that create different operating characteristics, depending on the application. The most common center configurations are the tandem center and the closed center, with the tandem center being the most common. With a tandem center valve, the A and B ports are closed in the center position to minimize cylinder or tool movement, while the P port is open to the tank while unloading the pump. With a closed center configuration, all the ports are closed in the center position, preventing any flow to any port of the valve. How each of these valve types are applied will be covered in our next video. I hope you found this preliminary review of valve terms useful. If you're looking to specify an industrial valve into your application, these terms should help get you started. For further information, you can visit us at enterpack.com 
or reach out to your nearest Enterpac contact for further assistance. In our next course in this series, we will discuss how to apply certain valve types for your application. I'm Dave Praber for the Enterpac Academy, and thanks for watching.